and welcome to the Drex Files Radio Hour with Joe Yardley. And uh, we are live. We're streaming live. And this is the year-end show of the Drex Files. Can I, get some, can I get a round of applause from uh, the audience? Do we have an audience? Oh, my God. We have an audience. It's unbelievable. It is That's unbelievable. Um, so I see a horse. The horse. What? You uh, see a horse? Yeah. I see a horse. I see Avril Falcon. All right, it's so a unicorn. Right, it's a I finally unicorn. got the three. Sort of, it's like a narwhal. Any. Jesus Christ! One this is, see, this is why I never do live. <laughs> this is why I never do live shows with Ardrin because he's closing the curtain while we're live. It's not All me. Right. It wasn't me. Okay, so this is the Drax Files Radio Hour with Joey Ardley, and we are live. And this is the year end show, so this is um, the first week of December. But we are uh, not continuing the show because we need a break, and we're going to have a rerun. So this is the last Thank one. You. Yes. Uh, for the for the rest of the year we might be doing something for new year's let's see so the the show title today is this is um the show is entitled the state of second life the state of sl and uh we're streaming on youtube and i think the youtube url is uh, gaming.youtube.com slash dragster slash live so let me introduce from left to right stage left uh the guests, or let let the guests uh, introduce themselves. Arden Schwartzman, who are you and why are you here? Hello. I'm here because you asked me to. I'm, I'm here because uh, it's always fun. And, uh, well, actually, uh, you, you lured me in because you, your uh, question for this show was, is this the end of a cell? Ah, yeah, right. Rod. That's right. Is this the end of SL? Because the sky is falling. Is the sky falling? Yeah. The sky may be falling in real life. Uh, so we were going to be. And I didn't know that. that. So um, I came here to inform myself. Wait a minute! You didn't know that the sky was falling. The sky has been falling yeah. for over ten years in Second Life. Yeah. Well, since November the eighth, uh, a lot of stuff has happened. So be this this general. Uh, feeling this, that stuff is coming to an end so this is a what post november 8th yeah i don't remember mm -hmm. i i don't i have short-term memory loss uh, but we'll, we'll we'll talk uh we'll ask some other guests what happened november 8th i i heard that this is a post november 8th world but uh, but who knows i mean we live in a virtual world where it's all about purchasing shoes so uh this might refer to something oh. that we're not familiar with Joe, For me, it's always 1929, so I don't care. We know that. Ah, election day, November 8th. I get it. <laughs> Joe, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Joe, I yeah, have... World, world. And and we want to inter uh, we want to incorporate the audience here in the room as well. And Kevin uh, Kevin said, uh, what did you say? Uh, Drax has PTSD. I have post Trump stress disorder. That is correct. Uh, Joe, you don't need any introduction. Uh, we know who you are. You're a 90 year old woman from uh, Berlin. And uh, then we have then we have our good friend Strawberry Singh uh, here. Uh, Strawberry, why don't you introduce yourself? Um, you are very little known in Second Life. I don't think anybody knows you. Um, so, <laughs> who are you well, and you why are you here? I, <laughs> I don't know why I'm here. Why am I here, Drek? I'm Strawberry Singh. I'm just the blogger and uh, mostly about fashion and I like to talk about um, different topics in a cell and sometimes politics and that gets me in trouble but you know it's, yeah. all, it's all good fun we'll talk a little <laughs> like bit about block. that oh thank you you don't make nice pictures <laughs> I can't read <laughs> <laughs> So strawberry oh, and uh, stra from 1922. So Let, let's get through these introductions, and then you guys can talk over each other. I don't care. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep drinking. Uh, but uh, let let me ask you, strawberry. So if I were to follow you on Twitter and I go like, Hey, strawberry Singh is a really great fashion blog, and she has really great instructional videos, and uh, and she and she like keeps me posted on like the new stuff that's happening with mesh heads and then i say hey i'm gonna follow her on twitter and all of a sudden oh you shouldn't there is some real life political garbage there where you 
where you accuse certain individuals that just want to make America great again of 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 being sort of misogynist and and really mean. I mean, what's up with that, Strawberry? What can I do? I'm 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 just I'm a sore loser and I'm a hater. What can I do? I I know. I mean, it's all about because you guys <laughs> lost, right? Right. Where does the hate come from? Why are you so angry? <laughs> I'm just full of so much <laughs> venom. What can I say? Yeah, <laughs> self-hating. Um, yeah. So we really are illegal voters. Okay, let's move on to Q. Please, those those introductions, and then we 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 dive right in. Uh, Cube in Nada. I'm really thrilled that Cube is here because Cube has been in Second Life for over ten years, um, but he hasn't been in for about two years. Cube, please introduce yourself. Who are you? What are you doing here or elsewhere? Actually, it's more than 10 years. Uh, real life, uh, Larry Rosenthal is my name, and uh, I think I was at actually some of the early uh, prototypes, like in 2003 or so, but ah. uh, or earlier. Uh, I've been doing design, virtual worlds, uh, augmented reality, VR, wh whatever you call it, 3D, for, I don't know, forever. And... Uh, and I, I'm back to continue to keep doing it forever, because uh, either I'll die soon or my avatar will keep going. <laughs> and you have such, I mean, the, your uh, sense of humor is, to me, and we live on different time zones. You live on Second Life time zone. Uh, I live in the European time zone. And when I get up, I look at uh, the, the stuff that you post on Twitter, and it's, it's a very dry humor that i really yeah. cherish and uh you i think your profile says uh, <clears throat> vr looks we know the future of vr and it looks like an 80s sitcom or something so it, it just a nutshell yeah. we, go, we go into this in more detail but but what is your sense of this crazy vr hype right now uh i've lived through all of them i mean i i literally was there in 92 nine, you know when the first vr bubble hit and uh uh, you know, uh, Carmack was showing uh, Doom in New York, and uh, so I've lived through like a four different 3D, real-time 3D bubbles. Uh, my background is industrial design, so I've always been world building. Uh, this is the one that's going to stick, I think, for a while, only because of the amount of money that's come into it. Uh, there's too, it's too big to fail, as they say in the United States, mm -hmm. which of course, you know, maybe isn't always true. Uh, but I, I just think that the technology, you know, the inexpensive LEDs, uh, the screens that came, and, and more importantly, AR, you know, the next generation of merging virtual, you know, images with reality uh, will continue. Mm -hmm. So I think this one's going to continue. I think, though, it's not going to be uh, as quickly and as, uh, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, as, as Oculus and uh, HTC Vive-ish as everybody thinks. We have a curtain problem here that they probably don't have with an Oculus and an yeah. HTC Vive. So uh, <laughs> while the world is moving on with VR, we in Second Life still have to deal with curtains that close. And uh, we don't know what the heck is going on. But uh, we don't care because we have people and we have uh, um, we have our our friends in here. And that's why we're not going to leave. So Nadine, yeah. uh, Nadine, um, I think I posted on Twitter, uh, please uh, show of hands if you want to come on this live show if you have you know if you enjoy second life and if second life changed changed your life um yes nadine introduce yourself um hi i'm nadine uh i'm here because of what you just said i uh, answered on your post on twitter and yeah uh, second life changed my life literally uh in what yeah. way um, let's say I was a girl with the body of a guy, and thanks to Second Life, I have more chance to to uh, train my voice and uh, act like a girl. And last year I had big surgery, and I'm fully myself now. So that's how Second Life kind of changed my world. That's when when i hear your story and this is something that 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 is to me so important obviously with the video series i'm trying to focus on these stories are you 
thrilled because we're, we're, we're diving into the subject matter. Second life is important to you. It's a world. It's very important to me. Mm-hmm. Right now, we live in this virtual reality hype. And an, one aspect of the virtual reality hype that, that I'm concerned about is that this anonymity and the pseudonymity and the fact that we can... Um, be who we who we truly think we we are uh by -hmm. representing through the avatar seems to me at least all the advertisement that you see is kind of secondary it looks like the facebook model is winning where um all of a sudden our avatars are going to be sort of the representation of our physical selves like 100% and 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 this all all this sort of reinventing ourselves and um and being playful with identity is kind of falling by the wayside how how do you see this are you concerned about or are you following this development at all or i am not concerned because i always think you are what you think you are and what you feel you are mm-hmm. i'm a 90 year old woman Yeah, yeah but the, there, <laughs> but not in reality. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm just. Uh, I think it's all going to matter on, again. What the platforms? What what are these things for? What type of communication are we playing? Mm-hmm. Are we doing business? You know, are we? What kind of trust are we trying to create in in each different environment? And you know, in the past, again, because of Second Life being so dominant in one way we've only had one place to do everything uh, mm-hmm. hopefully that will change with maybe web vr or something that will allow different platforms to emerge this is a topic that i'm um, passionate about um, and we talk a lot about and maybe listeners are kind of getting tired of me saying this but i do feel that a lot of the you know this is happening across platforms and it it's related to trolling and all this kind of stuff that people say oh we can't afford the anonymity and you know and then facebook uh, purged thousands of second life avatars because of their real name policy of course the irony is that turns out that twitter just did it right but they're making really good money with fake news and all this kind of stuff but any other <laughs> who, who wants who wants to jump in about um where they see the future or of, entertainment i mean that's the question what right. is you know right. what is the purpose of twitter so are they entertaining us or are they doing news i mean fake news has been the national Enquirer and uh, weekend update for 30 years 40 years it's you know bigfoot Uh, meets, you know, Dracula, fake news. Mm. But now But all of a sudden, uh, uh, our real uh, news is taking over and running with those stories for their own ratings as well. Mm. Uh, oh, I've been reading uh, over the past months now that fake news is caught on tremendously and uh, uh, one of the biggest motives uh, for people spreading this kind of news is actually just uh, plain commercial they, they were actually getting advertising money out of it and... right well that's what I'm saying is that got money I mean uh, yeah. CNN is no longer the CNN that was in the 80s or the 90s it's run by Jeff Zucker uh, Jeff Zucker he came from NBC television uh, they've you know they have a different model too now uh, to compete with Fox and others I mean you know It's a shame. I mean, you know, there is, you know, in the United States at least, uh, very few places on on television medium now that actually do journalism or, or even begin to fake it doing journalism. They all what happened to fake news. What happened to journalism like what we were used to, uh, for instance, like the Washington Post at the time of uh, Bernstein and what's the other guy Woodward? Woodward, Bernstein. Uh, uh, they weren't allowed to. They weren't allowed to publish anything until every fact of, was uh, heavily checked. They had an editor. That was the difference. Is that Bill Bradley mm-hmm. was the editor? We don't need no stinking editors. Sorry. Uh, let me you, jump in you, here. You I'm, do actually. I'm. I know. I, I know. I'm the. I'm. I'm the moderator. We need moderators because otherwise this is just going to be a trolling session. <laughs> Look at these guys. They hijack. They hijack the Drax Files Radio Hour and they talk about How real already? life. <laughs> Unbelievable, That's Joe. Because you have no biological overbalance. How did you get to Watergate? What the heck? You know, we need someone in charge here to make sure that everyone does exactly as we say. <laughs> okay, let me just let me let me just say <laughs> that audience, please post your comments. I'm gonna glance at the comment stream mm-hmm. and your questions. Uh, just post them there, and I'll I'll, I'll try to uh, put that in there. It, 
I love it. Let's let's keep that discussion going. But first, I want to ask specifically also Strawberry. What I asked Nadine, um, Strawberry, would you hypothetically be interested in a virtual world or in a VR world in the future that forces you would force you to? Um, to have the physical representation in real life. In other words, um, you know, you let's say you had to scan it, scan in your your real life face, and that would be your avatar's face. Is that something that you would be interested in? Is it something that you're concerned about? That the train is is heading towards that direction with all the competitors. Um, what do you think about that? I'm not really concerned about it. I think it's more of a privacy issue. Like, I would be worried who else I'm interacting with. Mm -hmm. And, well, I mean, it was just like reality. You go out in the world, you don't know who you're going to meet and what's going to happen. Same thing's going to happen with VR. I don't know if I would be as willing to get so involved in a VR experience like that, where I would have to be share up my real life information, my face, so forth. I would, I might use it occasionally, but it's not something that I would probably get deeply involved in or something and i think this is or a really good for point working purposes not for entertainment purposes right and yeah, this, this family stuff yeah and this is yeah, a common exactly. thread that we that we have here that this sort of re-engineering the, the the social norms and all uh, all anonymity and pseudonymity is bad uh with the zuckerberg model um that's not, it's not bad at all it's actually yeah, a lot safer exactly. in in certain situations Yep. Again, I think yeah. the idea of having multiple avatars and multiple platforms, uh, you know, multiple faces. Multiple, we wear multiple hats in life. We'll have to wear multiple hats. I have lots of hats. Some, some people wear a San Santa hat. Uh, Nadine wanted to ju <laughs> jump in here. Nadine, Nadine, go ahead. Uh, you wanted to say something? Yeah, I think that um, the anonymity, of course, you should not share too much real life information on a platform at Second Life or anything. I mean, y y you never know what kind of people it attracts, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that's exactly. Well, we but but see, mm -hmm. but the but the proponents of the real name uh, thing, which is obviously a scheme to make money they, they exactly. Yeah. But they would say, but the way they sell it, say they say, oh, we. By knowing everyone, uh, we create that trust, and then we cut down on the trolling and on the harassing and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's, like with not, that's likely that with net neutrality, yeah. that it would uh, be a better internet then. Yeah, with Facebook and Google, it's only money, money, money. <laughs> that's true. Well, but you know, that's product, product. I mean, the internet still. I mean, again, we there needs to be a decision of what's civic what's local, what's national, what's international, and also what's entertainment. And what's, you know, the difference between play and, and you know, what we don't, what, what the individual doesn't consider play. Mm -hmm. And that's really the key. Mm -hmm. I want to read a couple of comments here. Uh, James uh, is here, Eliastra, uh, the amount of research that's, wait a minute, he says, the cool thing about SL, one of the, my favorite aspects of SL is the mixing of social norms and social non-norms. All right, Iliaster. Does that mean you go to a brothel on Sunday and to church on Monday? I don't know what that means. Uh, Kelvin D. Cri well, that's all possible. Wow. Well. <laughs> I mean, that's that's real life, right? Who, who does? Right. I was talking about yeah, his real life. I Joe. do. <laughs> well, Joe, a little too part. much information. Joe, that's too much information. Well, I just go there to play chess and things. Right. Right. <laughs> okay, I admit I've never been to church. <laughs> Calvin D. Kramer says, um, oops, I lost that thread, uh, how something that is perceived as abnormal in one's real life society can be accepted as normal enough in Second Life. And Eric Well, that's Ma also because Second Life yeah. is small. Remember, remember, this is a smaller community based on the entire world. I mean, now, again, the, the VR bubble you're worried about is one that's trying now to mainstream yeah. virtualizing yeah. technologies in 3D. So, uh, all of a sudden, you know, m billions others are going to come, or one, you know, are going to play, or are going to come in, and, you know, that's going to change, uh, you know, what people look at. You know, people, again, what they look at this technology is doing for them or yeah. against them. Uh, you know, we'll ch the overall will change, but again, there'll be 
that's why I say it looks like television. Television is not one thing. It's it's sports, it's entertainment, it's news, or so it was. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what this will be. Mm-hmm. So are you it feels guys... like a hype. Yeah, Arden, I was just going to get there because Cubes, Cubes, you said billions of people, and that sounds like Philip Rosedale 2006. Billions of people. And again, I mean, I, I would love to... He's right. Yeah, but Joe, do you mean that this VR, and Cube already said it, but Joe, do you think that VR this time will catch on at that level of magnitude? Absolutely. Yeah, why? Absolutely. It's, it's going to change everyone's lives. It's uh-huh. very simple because it works. This time it actually works and it's affordable. And, you know, if you know the kind of potential virtual uh, A $1,000 Vive um, is affordable. Hmm. I don't know. Tell that well, to a no, Syrian no, refugee. There's more than just a fight. Price will go down, I'm sure. Yeah, uh, forget about you know, uh, now and Vive. We, uh, we are now in the television uh, in the 1950s when, it's rega- you know, when we're talking about television. You know, it, it, only a few people have it. It's very exciting. There are only a few shows, um, but it's magical. It is fascinating. It's interesting. And we know where television went. It went kind of big. Yeah, and, and it went kind of bad. But, you know, everyone was skeptical, <laughs> and everyone said, you know, people will stop reading. Mm. And actually, they I'm still skeptical. And actually, they did stop reading. Statistically speaking, they watch Fox. How many people? How many people read a book? Well, I do. Joe, thank you for setting this up for me. So this is what I say every single welcome. show. I read paper books. Now let me ask you guys. Me too. Uh, see, I Nadine, and we have so much in common. Let's let's get out of here, Nadine. <laughs> this is boring me. Uh, no, but <laughs> what if we read on our Kindles though? <laughs> that's no, that that's acceptable. No, it 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 is. It's Where's the alcohol? I don't know how mainstream it'll get this VR thing because seriously, this this big thing. It's still a big thing. You're wearing on your face and. Mm-hmm. Are you going to sit there for hours with that thing? I've already, already done change. that. I have, I've, I've, all I've all those will change. What do you do? You, you with, sit on the desk the chair? And, and, no, mm-hmm. I was stood behind the bar doing happy hour, talking to my friends from all over the world, serving drinks, chatting. Yeah. And, you know, I, I could do that for over an hour. And that was with the DK1 in Second Life, which is far from perfect for VR. Um, and you know, just because it was lots of fun. But your face didn't go to get all sweaty and no, no, no nausea or anything. Arden is raising a good point, and Cube wanted to jump in. Let let let, let me throw in that I also feel um, it feels uncomfortable after a short while with wearing the headsets. Cube, you were jumping sure, in but there because will change. How will they change? Well, I mean, again, we're defining like things every, again. Like- oh. <laughs> So, 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 you know, liter- literally as VR, AR, Second Life, Virtual World, forget all definitions for a moment. Uh, again, through contact lenses, through glasses that uh, use light fields into the retinas, uh, things that Magic Leap and others are working on. You know, it'll be as comfortable, you know, the, the virtual images will, will be able to live in reality, you know, uh, in the rooms with us. Uh, at the same time, we'll be able to occlude as much as we need of the real world, so it becomes more and more virtualized. It's not going to be Second Life. It's not going to be driving third-person avatars around. It may be something different, but it's going to be, again, virtualized technology. And it will, again, the numbers will be the same kind of numbers that have cell phone adoption today. Mm. I mean, if Absolutely. the PC revolution is 30 years old already, it wasn't until the, until the cell phone and the smartphone and the last eight years that worldwide adoption took place uh, of and this people is, having this is my cue to say that i don't have a phone right Rex? right this is the right this is the cue for joe to say that she doesn't have a cell phone so let's recap here <laughs> uh 20 minutes ironically i didn't also when i lived you know the first 10 years of second life when i was in, even at even though i was in berkeley and i was in california i didn't use a cell phone uh, for a lot of the 2000s because I didn't need one because most of the people I knew were online and it was through email mm. uh, but you know then when I had to enter the real life for a while uh, I needed a cell phone uh, because everybody else was communicating on cell phone mm. and it uh, wasn't even a smartphone and it's only been a smartphone for maybe three years now okay so, and but you're talking about the 
you're talking the about the, 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 the quote unquote uh, killer the app and the, the killer app is the necessity that you needed when I moved to California I didn't have a cell phone when I moved to California the first thing was that I bought one because I'm, you're in the car all the time and you need to kind of uh, uh, talk to you but let, let, uh, real quick let me just read a couple comments here first of all on the YouTube stream we have a we have a great guest um, a Linden alum uh, information chief and his avatar name is purple hey dude uh, I tell if you want to tell people uh, who who you were at Linden uh, I don't want to give it away if you don't want to give it away but he's uh, watching the YouTube stream um, information chief aka purple says X Linden says we're a long way away from billions even with mobile AR Pokemon Go peaked 45 million active so I want to throw that in let me read another a bunch of other comments that I find important uh, Iliastra is saying the Lumia viewer for SL now supports Google Cardboard that is actually really cool uh, the Lumia uh, viewer um, it's a mobile SL client that is made by, uh, please refresh my memory with the name, by by a resident. She's been doing this for a long time. It's $2.99. Uh, Loki Elliott says, I don't read books. Kelvin says, I only recently begun reading ba paper books because Drax made me feel inferior Loki, for not doing it. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. I just want to say, Kelvin, thank you very much. I've done my job to make you feel inferior. That's the whole purpose of this weekly program. Uh, Eric Mondrian says, Joe is superhuman. And uh, I'm not. Loki says you're a time traveler. I spent over an hour exactly. in a PlayStation VR game. I had to stop because my legs were killing me. So there's different opinions about the um, feeling comfortable about uh, VR in the current iteration with the with the with the current headsets. Now we already mentioned this um, that. We're talking primarily about HMDs and all this kind of stuff, and what you know, what 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 made Second Life really stick and very successful, despite relatively small numbers. I would call it a huge success because of its sustainability. Um, is of course the empowering, oh, yeah, empowering people to to really build their dreams. Um, now, quick yes. quick question to everyone. Uh, Nadine, you said yes. Building your dreams again, flesh out a little bit your dream and what you built, and 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 tell us a story about the importance of Second Life. What what does Second Life mean to you? Uh, Second Life for me means to be yeah to to be what you want to be, to do what you want to do. That's mm -hmm. what Second Life means to me. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I said it literally did. <laughs> But what do you, if you could tell us what type of activities do you like to do here? I mean, is this, I remember the first the thing moment. that that really struck me when I came in was hanging out with a friend. I was in California, he was in Germany, and we were hanging out on the beach. And actually, I'm going to throw this out to the audience as well. What is your, what was the first activity that hooked you and made you stay? What was that? thing uh, and to me it was hanging out at the beach looking at the SL sunset and the just beach no it was fully clothed Ardwin. of course I've been no types of no beach <laughs> yeah the first search okay let let me rephrase that question what was the first search item you put into the search engine was it nude beach come on be honest no but Nadine what was the first thing that kind of got you and and then and then made you stick because the social hmm yeah, the socializing. I used to stick my over my first year was kind of on a Dutch sim, uh, as the Dutchies call it, uh, 0031 sims, uh, 0031 mm -hmm. sims. Uh, yeah, that's kind of where I got stuck. And later it was clubbing, DJing, socializing. Yeah, and Mumble now beach. yeah. On on. <laughs> yep, on the beach. <laughs> that one as well. Yep. <laughs> I don't know yep. Dutch name. Uh, really quick before we go <laughs> be, before, before we go to Cube with with that same question, Alina Livet. Uh, Alina Livet is the developer of the uh, of of the Lumia viewer. Uh, you can get it for two ninety nine on the on the Play Store. Uh, it's only for Android. Also, um, let's see here. Eric was asking a question. I'm going to post that later. The Dove Road said. 
she stayed here because of a music concert uh, Ava Real stayed because uh, she was exploring Midnight City and uh, great stuff um, now Cube why when you first came here or you were in here with I guess maybe a different avatar from the very beginning um, why not the exact same actually ah but ask your question because I'm, I'll, 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 okay yeah go so, ahead well okay well no actually uh, I came in here uh, in a set twice in a sense uh, in 2001 I, I was I ru was running the San Francisco web 3d group uh, and that's where a lot of this technology and a lot of the ideas were all coming from uh, I think uh, for years I would see Corey at Mac world sitting by himself in the games area you know, who's heavier than, with a you know with a screen in front of him showing off second one, and nobody cared. Nobody knew what it was. Nobody cared. Corey uh, Andreka for the Noobs, co-founder of Linden Lab. Yes. And uh, you know, I would always say to him, you know, uh, it's a great technology, but you've got to figure out what it wants to be. But and also, why would anybody would what why they would want to be using it? You know, and, and, and you know, as I say, it was in the games area of Mac World, so you could already see where people put it. And you all would say, well, it's not a game. But then, so by 2003, uh, it was actually in beta, earlier versions, and it was also running, uh, and, I, and I, would, I would come back and look at it, and it was getting better, and uh, it was in uh, uh, some of the classes and uh, SFFCU and, pro, and beta, uh, you know, and it was getting interesting. But again, remember, I come back from a place where there was 20 different platforms, uh, I was working with a thing called uh, 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 Axel 3D, which was really Unity before Unity. Mm. Uh, was that co-developed by Axel Rose? Sorry, I had to throw that. <laughs> uh, actually, oh. mine did. Oh. <laughs> two young brothers from uh, uh, who used to be Soft Image guys, and that used, you know Soft Image once was a major 3D company. And so showed to go in five years, everything changes all the time. Uh, but but quickly uh, by 2006. Uh, the amount of people at Second Life who were in there as customers is what got me interested. So I took the Starbase C3 property and invaded. Uh, Hero Pendragon might be a name some remember. I literally had hired him to help take the spaceships and turn them into game ships that could shoot targets and help convert uh, the IP that I had, including the pants that I'm wearing, which the texture map was actually done for other technologies in two, probably 1997 originally uh, but we converted it and we you know I came into Second Life with things to sell so I saw Second Life as a market for role playing game or intellectual property creation let, let, let me cut off you real quick in a, in a very rude fox uh, type way as I mentioned earlier yeah. because we want to move it. Let, let me summarize so this is a, this is an economic reason you saw you saw a market you had something to make and sell uh, and that was the right fit uh, Nadine it was the socializing um, I'm going to read here the comments. Uh, Hugh Kuba Stratton says, Narcissism is a driver in presence in SL. <laughs> That's very funny. <laughs> um, uh, now, Strawberry, my question to you. We did this series, uh, What SL Means to Me. Uh, there, it was actually originated by Ziola Linden, and there's a 30-something videos out there. Please, guys, look, uh, look it up on YouTube. There's also on Strawberry's um, YouTube channel, I think there's a, um, there's a playlist with, with every, everybody in there. Um, but Strawberry, when you first came in, when did you come in, and, 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 and why, did it, um, why did it stick? I mean, why did you stick around? Why didn't you just log out like the average person spends like four and a half minutes in SL and then never comes back? Why did you come back? Yeah. Um, I actually, first, I, I, I someone told me about it, a friend, and I logged in because I thought it was like The Sims. Uh, I, I wasn't a regular gamer or anything. I hadn't really done any online gaming or anything like that. So I, when I logged in, I was totally confused and I logged out for about two weeks. Mm. <laughs> I was like, I don't know what's going on. So I actually did give up. But then I decided to give it another try. 
And then I don't know what where I ended up. I, I ended up searching for something like South Asian because that's where I originate from. And I was trying to see if I can find some clothing or something. And then I ended up meeting a bunch of people from India and Pakistan. And I was, just got friendly with them. And I realized the social aspect of being able to socialize with people across the world. Uh, and it was amazing. I and think that they liked your of, name. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I think that just kind of made me stick to it. But now, after so many years, I mean, that was back in 2007. I think the first year it was mainly socializing. But then after that, I kind of got sick of socializing online. <laughs> I don't really do it that much. Now I just log in and take pictures. Now it's more of a creative outlet for me where I can just, you know, uh, be artistic with the pictures if I want or just talk about something on my blog. Uh, and, and it's kind of safe for me to do that if I was blogging with my real life name and sharing my real life um, uh, uh, about, you know, talking about politics and such, uh, such I think I would would be make make it a little bit more dangerous for me because already I, I see the kind of backlash I get if I if I give any kind of personal opinion. Uh, I'm called all sorts of names and, and already I'm getting like, I watch my statistics so I can see what people are Googling mm -hmm. and ending up on my blog and they're trying to Google what <laughs> who I am in real life. <laughs> wow. So, so this is interesting. So the, yeah. yeah I, so I, I this wanna, kind of yeah, is the ahead. safety no, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no. Uh, this is what we were talking earlier about because now you basically you, you ba if I were mm, mm, if, illusion of intimacy. <laughs> yeah, but no, no. But there is real intimacy in se in in Second Life. It's not an illusion. Ish. Yeah, I don't know. Ish. I don't well, know. I think, I, I think all of it is ish. And it's the internet. That's just we're all mediated through a device. Yeah, but sometimes that's better because, you know, in real life, I hate everybody. But in Second Life, there are people I actually talk to. You guys are Everybody awful. hates me in real life. God, well, what kind of coincidence? Cupid joke. Come on, get our room. I mean, <laughs> no, but... Uh, wow. How dare you? But, but I have to slightly... I mean, first of all, I want to I ask Strawberry this question. But before I do that, uh, when we're on the subject... Um, of intimacy and, me and memories I think there is a connection that is uh, incredibly deep and I want to read here from Donnie on the YouTube stream a lot of lonely people in real life are surrounded with friends in second life people with disabilities connect easier and learn how to deal with situations without a real confrontation I've done hundreds of hours if I put it together in, in, in interviews with people who um, have connections that are in incredibly deep I have had tons of stories I'm, pers I'm pursuing three stories right now and nadine was hinting at her own story i'm pursuing three stories right now where people found their soulmate in second life yeah i know the argument can be made or oh, you can do this uh on the internet why do you need a 3d world my argument would be that um the sense of presence when you identify with your alter ego <laughs> is just magnitudes higher and it might get higher as we ended up with 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 hmds but i'm also not so sure about that a lot of people go like oh yeah you know with 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 an oculus you can really feel that you're there i've interviewed so many people who are on the crappiest of laptops their 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 own avatar doesn't even res and they would report that, would that be me that yeah <laughs> Poor Arthur. Okay, let's collect some lindens to get him a new laptop. All we need level. is time. Just no. Okay, so level, but, level okay. of uh, of of we're gonna know, of, of fundraiser for Arthur. Long story short, hey, I want a new computer too. Long story short, the sense of here, Eric Mondrian is saying uh, there's a strong sense of immersion and presence even without headset, and that's exactly my point. And I think some people are so desensitized, um, and they need that stimulation, and it's kind of actually a sad thing. But I want to go into a different topic because Strawberry was hinting at the fact that um, she's getting a backlash when she uh, when she deviates from her from her fashion centric persona. That from she her, created from her like oh look look how pretty i look today exactly. no, but if i actually share a valid opinion that i'm biased i have an agenda i'm i'm mm -hmm. eating people and i'm i'm all sorts of evil it's so it's, it's, no no it's and your typecast all I'm doing is using my voice yeah, yeah. You know? no it's i mean it's almost like some actors who, who who have sort of a political uh activism surrounding them they're not allowed to to voice their opinion because they're supposed to just act or be in movies <laughs> and uh, i mean in the in the case right. of in the case of um uh what's his name 
Ah, what's his name now? Jesus Christ, the super right winger. God, I can't. Jesus think. Christ, he's super right winger. No, 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 no. The, uh, the guy on Twitter. No, no. Twitter. No, no. On Twitter? Yeah, he's an actor. He's, he's an actor. Right winger. James yeah. Woods. James Woods. Ex- thank you, James oh. Woods. Exactly. Oh, that guy, man. So, he's an actor. so, so in the sense, yeah. Yeah. In, in, on Twitter. When we're talking about James Woods, then then that is one person who should right. just shut the fuck up and just act, because he's a good <laughs> actor. Uh, but well, uh, we have freedom of speech. I mean, again, this is the whole, you know, we, the issue we don't. This, Q, uh, in Germany, we don't. Well, that's the point. I mean, in, uh, that's <laughs> one of the point of these, of these virtual worlds is that we're all sitting in a you know a, a space together. We're communicating together. Uh, you know, have, have national borders still, and we have no media borders. Mm-hmm. And uh, media borders are becoming the only media. The only border is Facebook versus Google. Mm-hmm. You know, the corporate borders. Uh, you know, just you know, the get where you're going. You know, we just finished Silence, the movie. Give mm-hmm. it a plug. All about free speech, mm-hmm. and it focuses a lot. The finance that came from people who believe are uh, the alt right, uh, and you know, it's it's just all about the idea of being able to communicate and not get in trouble. Most of the stories in the movie are people who lost their jobs for saying something on Twitter, either by mistake or by purpose, mm-hmm. by design. Mm-hmm. I yeah. feel that's rule number one, probably uh, in social media. Don't use your real name. Yeah, but don't say things you regret. That's the world you want. But that's that's a world that I frankly don't think you know work, works. A lot of people don't want to live in that world in reality. Mm-hmm. Uh, and now, but social media is our reality. As you were all joking, social media may have just elected the first leader of the so-called free world, and and did Brexit, <laughs> and, and what's going on in Germany as well at this point. I mean, that's right. Uh, democracy it's a good and learning and opportunity. They have this. problems together. <laughs> Yeah, well, then uh, do it girl? again. <laughs> no, he's telling me to change my name to Raspberry. Yeah, uh, Cube, uh, <laughs> yeah, please put I your... Uh, so Cube was mentioning uh, the movie that you were working on, uh, Silence. Uh, put put that in the chat, please. And I wanna, I'm going to have a, a separate show with Cube uh, for the hour next year when we go back. This is, again, uh, let me remind listeners, this is the year-end show. We're going to do reruns until the end of the year so we can take a break. Uh, but uh, Cube will be back on the show and we'll be talking the hour your movie i looked at the website very interesting but there are a few people who are and i don't want to get into uh, this hour because there's so many other things um there there are some people who are known in the in 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 the alt right that that are uh that made that movie but i may may be mistaken so we'll we'll talk about that i I was the art director of the movie and believe me there's nothing politically about me that anyone could ever call the alt right or right wing and i was the art director i i literally you know i, I sat there with the director and we worked on this movie mm-hmm. it's our movie uh, it, uh lauren feldman's movie and again uh i think you'd be supr- what people call the alt right is like saying second life no one knows exactly what it is <laughs> at this moment so That's anything the thing that with you the frog, wanna- right that, that's the thing with the frog, which is Peppy the Frog, from a comic book that was being co-opted by again people playing in the 4chan groups, which have with also the people with the stiff arms. But they all have, you know, they're all from Second Life. I mean, the tr- ten years of Second Life has been the prototype for what went on on Twitter and what's going on in, in the politics of our, of the United States right now and also other countries. Uh, so you know, uh, and a lot of that has to do with things that you're taking for, that like anonymity and the things that you know went on. Uh, I, I you know suggest people take a look at the Wired State and even though she was called the troll and all these things in Second Life for ten years, the enemy of Second Life was Prokowski Never, Catherine Fitzpatrick. The truth is, is that everything that she wrote about has come true in real life from the prototype of Second Life. Second Life is the prototype for the next 20, 30 years of the planet Earth in social oh, relations. Uh, I, so. pro- I, I, I should have really... <laughs> I should have really. We have enough premise. We're all doomed. I should have really yeah, invited. 
guys. Sorry, let me let me jump in here. I should have really invited Prokofi for this discussion. Let's uh, let's just say what is referred to as the alt right. I slightly disagree. I mean, it's very heterogeneous. There's people with a lot of different opinions. I encourage folks to listen to on the media from WNYC. They they do a, a, a fabulous analysis, which does the uh, the diversity in the in that movement justice. But to me, frankly. Um, yeah, uh, I, I I have a, a big problem with um, with what any of these people suggests uh, is sort of acceptable in terms of dealing with other human beings of a, of a diverse nature. Um, I, I only suggest that from some of the inside information I've learned is that many of them are actors more than they are uh, ethicists. <laughs> oh dear! Well, as someone who's worked in film and television, um, I, can, I, I, I generally run away from actors. If you're saying, I, understand. I, I find it uh, troubled. The the I find it intensely troubling that people uh, enjoy uh, throwing or or put uh, just sort of uh, starting fires and then see things burn. Um, I, I agree. <laughs> I actually yeah. have oh, more. Let, let me say one more so sentence. Easy. Let me say one more sentence real quick. I actually have more respect, and I say this in, in quotation marks, mm -hmm. of someone who is con has a has an ideological conviction versus someone who just uh, says things to kind of rile up emotions um, to, or to please anyone. I, or, I, I, I know. That I'm, I'm not sure if someone and says and that uh, error, when black I, people I are like to, sort of inferior are genetically. Says that 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 is somehow uh, pleasing people. That's just there to bring up. No, it's emotions. crazy. It, it, it it's crazy talk to you and me. It does please a certain group of people, and if their agenda is that group of people uh, to use it for whatever their agenda is with those people, group of people, they do it. it again, I think you know. Again, the, the reality of what they're saying is crazy talk. Uh, but they have an agenda. Most a lot of their agenda is based. A lot of their agenda was to become famous. Mm -hmm. and that's literally it was more about being like famous. serial killers. Loki, I think yeah, this is the some of them. Yeah, Loki, uh, please put in the URL for the um, for the Adam Curtis movie um, about the. Um, Jesus Christ, the title escapes me now. Loki just put it in there. Loki's in the audience. Superstar. No, no, no. There you go. Jesus Christ, superstar. The, the, late, the latest Adam Curtis uh, documentary, Hypernormalization, um, I think is, right. is, a, is a must watch in that regard. Uh, if we do live in a world where it is uh, primarily about getting famous no matter what, then we're doomed. I think mankind could be, could be aspired to a little bit more. But then again, I'm saying this while Strawberry Singh is uh, arguably a famous SL person, and Iliastra just asked me if people who are unfollowing me uh, feel like, or if I feel like I'm muddying my brand, and this goes back to Strawberry, I think along the lines what I talked to Strawberry. Not at all. Right, exactly. And we talked about this I'm, sort of I'm, offline. If anything, yeah, someone I think we have a responsibility. having an agenda. Now, someone recently accused me of having an agenda, and I totally have an agenda. I want the my agenda is I want to get rid of the readers that have that kind of hatred and racism and bigotry and misogyny inside them. I don't want them reading my blog, getting my giveaways, playing with my, you know, interacting with me, and I, those kind of people just kind of disgust me. I'm not talking about everybody that voted for this, a certain person. I'm talking about certain individuals, you know, and I'm not, I've never once called anybody racist or anything in any of my blog posts. But yes, Same. I'm really trying to turn away those people that, you know, I just don't want to have any kind of interaction with them because mm -hmm. they're, to me, they're, I'm going to get a lot of backlash with this, but to me, they're at a certain level of, you know, sociopaths and I just, they have no compassion or, or human, um, I don't know, kind of decency. Well, well the, <laughs> the irony is in the real life, you didn't have the tools to always shut them up. On the internet and Second Life and through virtual reality tools, you can shut them up. 
So yeah. that's yeah. the best way the world oh, people live in. That, that, I wish I had a mute button in real life. Why don't we have a mute button in real life? <laughs> Nadine is yeah, do something life about that. N that's <clears throat> Jesus Christ superstar. N Nadine is Nadine <laughs> yeah, is getting in here. Nadine, go ahead. Yeah, but that's the thing here in the uh, here behind the computer. People are not afraid, and they think they are not supposed to have limits. And well, they're also they, they, just badly brought up. Because well, yeah, like, like, they they, they, they have, don't care that they hurt you or, or something like that. They just who's to say that that's a society thing? Because you know, I I disagree with people on the internet all the time. I have very heated discussions with them. But I always remain civilized and decent. <laughs> yeah, because you know, <laughs> that's how I was brought up. That's you know, you're not uh, rude yeah. even if you're anonymous. You just behave yeah, like I a tried. civilized person. Exactly. Yeah, I I like you in the face. Yeah, I try to stay nice as well when people are getting rude. Unless there is a bottle of wine, then I might get angry. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I think that's for coffees. For coffees, uh, uh, when I read for, uh, 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 yeah, that's how I always perceive for coffees blog posts. Is like, wow, there's some really kind of in-depth analysis of also really kind of complex political situations, and then it gets increasingly crazy. Uh, I'm imagining for coffee sitting there, and then you know the bottle gets emptier, and then she goes. Like, ah, fuck everybody! Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I met for coffee a couple times nice in real life. Of here in front of me. Right. Yeah. Or, uh, someone, if someone wants a, a, a can of Brondo, it's got electrolytes. Okay, please give me one, Arden. I need to drink here. <laughs> okay, let me read a couple comments <laughs> it's, here from the it's YouTube what stream. Grave. Quiet, my oh. friends, quiet. So, Jesus. Talking about it's Jesus, uh, Jesus PG Oops. is in the YouTube stream, and he says, I got into SL after watching the Oprah documentary Live 2.0 in 2010. I've been active ever since. I tried to get into SL before, but then he was 13 at the time. Uh, it's funny, the Live 2.0 documentary, I got into a kind of a fight with the director, Jason Springarn, because I find it incredibly exploitative, exploit exploitative um, and really taking advantage and, and sort of going on with cliche so you can find Life 2.0 on YouTube. I think it's readily available. Um, Asri Falcone is pro uh, portrayed in there. Um, and it's such a cheap shot where she's seen uh, as this glamorous avatar and she has this store in world and then it cuts to her sleeping on a mattress in her mom's basement uh, with beer bottles around and stuff like that. Now, the... This is yeah, I and, saw that right, and but I know Asri personally, and and one of the facts that was not that was cut out of the film. It would have been very easy to put that in there. The reason why she came back home was she had to help out uh, with her father who had health problems, and she was actually in college, and she came back to help out, and there was no room other than in the basement. All right. So but that's all about editing. Exactly, Cube. And and that that that's why me, I said uh, editors are important. Yeah. Uh, but that's what I was saying when I said that I've seen the future of VR. It looks like eighties television. <laughs> what I meant is that VR is a media is not reality. It's a mediated medium like television or film. Yay, black it means black that it's under the narration of its of its creator, the agenda of its creators, and if its creators are the art. We're all on, right now in, under the agenda of of Linden Labs, of what of their application, of their interface. That's how we're communicating. That's how we're being mediated right now. I'm actually li I'm sitting right now. I'm laying on a on a futon mattress on the floor. Oh actually, as we speak right oh this moment. God. Cube, this is just not. This is just too much information right now. I'm I'm, I'm sitting I'm in, my, in my parents' basement. I'm sitting in my underpants <laughs> with my beer belly ha hanging over the keyboard. I gotta make sure that I don't knock over the wine bottle. No, but right. <laughs> but all of those are real life media, uh, or, or or real life <laughs> imagery. You know? like I say, we delude ourselves into what we want to believe. No, uh, that's but, why again I don't no, like. I, I feel kind of odd when we talk about cutting people off and censoring. And using these tools to do it, when you have no idea, you know, uh, you know, where, where's the prince if you didn't kiss the frog, uh, you know. But story, my, if, but if, I would, again. but see, but I would stipulate, and again, this is to me, my my work in here is about really focusing on on these aspects of of 
of exploration and also dreaming. What is wrong right. with living a life like uh, episode 38 with Ebony Khan, where we tongue in cheek, I, I, you know, I say to Ebony, "Oh my God, this is like this is escapism. You're living in these virtual mansions." And she says, "What's wrong with with this escapism? What's wrong with wanting to play this glamorous life? There's nothing wrong with it." Um, I didn't say there was anything. I, wrong I know with you it didn't, but right, it, it just irks me and i know you're not saying this but but it it, it, it kind of uh hit me with 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 uh, the the interaction i often have with journalists who dismiss role play or dismiss um you know reading the, books is also escapism watching television is escapism watching a movie no, no, no. In cinema is escapism Both, there's nothing that's right and most wrong. reading comic books uh watching too much tv uh these were things that for most of our modern culture of the 20, 20th century now, or early 21st century, were considered, you know, not good to do, per se. Even if you read books, you were, you were a bookworm, you were in your own imagination. Why aren't you out playing with the friends? I mean, this is, you know, these are our cultural, you know, <laughs> baggage. And the question is, is how will that change with this medium? And again, we were talking about, you know, where where is VR going? Forget about billions, millions, whatever the numbers are. The point is, is that just as the cell phone is in lots of people's hands and the laptop was in less people's hands and the tower even less people's hands, uh, this technology of immersing ourselves in these, you know, again, mediated three-dimensional re immersive realities are just going to be all over the place in the next 20 years. But, and that's, you know, one of... And one of the few, yeah. one of the few good things about this terrible world we're living in uh, is that the worse the world gets, the easier it is will be for us to explain why we're hiding in VR. Yeah, and that is actually something having 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 sort of uh, now just uh, uh, defended escapism. I find actually that uh, the, that it coincides with with Trump and 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 right wing uh, movements in in Germany and elsewhere, and the availability and of VR and check exactly and, and constant war uh, people checking out completely that actually does scare me because uh, and Kelvin was was adding this earlier uh, here in the local chat about um, a kid's brought up um you know not to 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 to, to be uh, nice and all this kind of stuff uh in a it's a long-winded way of saying that i think there's a huge failure of public institutions that led to trump and led to the right-wing movement um globalization also and all this kind of stuff but now that we have very soon vr for people to just completely disengage and again let's not forget the american election 90 million people didn't vote so they have checked out of 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 stuff already it's going to be right. incredibly easy for people to even further disengage and that is a, a negative aspect of this wonderful technology that is super scary right I don't know. It's been it, it's been always it's always been like this. I mean, even in in Victorian times, if you I want know, to even go live of, in a barn, yeah, but the order of magnitude, surely, second life in other virtual worlds would be some right. sort of reflection of real life too. I mean, all the movement movements we have in real life, certainly they would just uh, uh, be in here too, and we'd have remember, the same issues, and discussions. I meet more people in Second Life than I do in real life. In Amsterdam, in, in real life, I live in Amsterdam. I go out, walk my dogs, and I do shopping. That's about it. So I talk to a cashier, and I'm usually telling her to, you know, behave properly. And you know, that's about it. In Second Life, there are people I meet every single. There's no avoiding them. They're drunks. They come to my bar every day. <laughs> well, there's a bubble. You live in, a, in the real world. Creates, you know, uh, have economic things that create a bubble. Uh, you know, uh, mobility things. I mean, you mentioned, yeah. again, you know, the, one of the whole issues I'll mention about, you talk about disability and people uh, who, who are disabled, who, who use Second Life to enrich themselves. The whole point is, is that this medium, this Second Life or any interface, what it does is it brings everybody into the same level. So that if you're the act, you know, it's like, it's the movie The Incredibles, to, bo to be honest. It's, you know, everybody, it takes... If you're, if you can't run, 
you can now walk. But if you can run at 60 miles an hour and be the fastest man in the world, no, you could only walk at the pace that the programmers wrote the application for you to walk. Mm -hmm. Okay? Everybody's walking equally. So, but it's under the rules of that interface, of that mediation, of that company, of that owner. So it's a, it's a catch-22. What happens when that interface is now limiting people? You say we should be unlimited, but now if we grow up only within the interfaces of virtual reality, we are limiting ourselves to, to things that we could do because we're limiting ourselves to whatever the next version of the SL browser is. But this is not some, it sounds a little bit like a, it, it would be a conspiracy to stunt people, but it's more a technological limitation for now. Can, no, 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 this, this has to do with the way capitalism is structured. Now we're entering a whole nother aspect of this discussion with oh, Cube. Is, no, what Cube is saying is incredibly, is incredibly God, valid. For the bottle here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> capitalism, capitalism, is, capitalism is just the economic <laughs> model that we're using now, but it's how media works. I mean, the best time. Uh, but you're talking about, about oh. you're talking about platforms and the restrictions of platforms. Now imagine a platform that, that is actually you that is yeah but what if media were owned by the people like some public media uh, pro um, um, well, P PBS is I mean there are yeah. public no. access television no. things like I love that we're now they, they don't exist public access the way that it used to 20 years ago 30 years ago in New York and San Francisco and LA yeah. uh, because yeah. again it, they privatize I mean the, I'll, I'll be honest that's the, what I'm the getting at the privatization problem I have with Trump right now is the privatization mode I mean it Again, I'm, I'm from America, I'm of a certain age, I'm 52 years old, 53, I don't even know, my birthday was a week you ago. You don't look it. Uh, thank you. Well, my remember my hair, is my, this is my avatar from 10 years ago, my hair is now grayer. You, look, you look very 2005, uh, and that's a compliment. Uh, <laughs> I'll take that as a compliment. Yeah, it is. It, Keep it, away it, from Germany. He's old school. No, no, wait, but Cube is There's, going, uh, I mean, this is an important stuff. I mean, I, I think I agree. I, I think I know where you're going. Remember the this. 80s is all I'll tell anybody who's in this room. Because if I remember the, the 80s. It was awful. If we're lucky. <laughs> I knew that was coming. we're only lucky. And, and I remember the me, 70s. was even worse. I was in art school in New York in the 80s. We were not fans of Ronald Reagan. But the worst that Trump, if the best that Trump does is become Ronald Reagan 2.0 will survive. If the worst that he does is become you know who, mm -hmm. then we got a problem. But the point is, is that I see a lot of the media, uh, 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 you know, not getting the fact that uh, you know that's really what's just happened here. But of course, because the media is completely uh, the media is not biased. The media only has one bias, and the bias is money. Money. Yeah, exactly. Because that's because exactly. that's true. But that's because of the hyper capitalism, not just capitalism, but hyper capitalism. Yeah, I it's agree like with you. Social, I'm not against. I'm I mean, not against yeah. the the strive to to make to 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 be better, make money, be successful economically. I'm not against that at all. Right. Yeah. But the privatization well, that you're I, mentioning I, I, is is the root of of all evil. Let, let me say one thing. Uh, Kelvin says here in the chat, do you think Trump won in part by leveraging apathy and disgust with the system? Yes, absolutely. That is a big absolutely. part of it. And it plays always in the hand of an authoritarian figure. Uh, they One aspect is apathy that people are just have given up to an extent where they go like, what's the use? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to survive here, right? So it's a feudal system That's what in happened that regard. in Second Life left Second Life when they got fed up Good point. with the totalitarian system of Linden. That's why the numbers aren't the same as they were in 2008. Well, people came in for different reasons, even if it was to do business. or well, the education. Look at the education market and what happened in Second Life. Okay? They left in disgust when the totalitarian system of the platform, they they all went to open sims hoping to do something with that. They were hoping to make a lot of money with it. No, the but price hike like, was an issue. Some of them were making money. Some, whatever their agendas were, it was a, it was opposite of the agenda of the corporation and the investment stockholders of Linden Labs that control this medium, this platform. And that but a lot of companies came in, and they wanted to. They wanted. They thought this was going to be big, just like VR. And they, well, they I was one of them. And they were, and they I brought were, them in. Really I really was this sure VR? What it was all about? Yeah. Yes. Well, uh, yeah, it is. 
uh, but we that's are in jail right now. Was that jumping the bubble? <laughs> uh, there, uh, there's always people who have nothing interesting other than just their own desire to, to, to be part of something and to get rich on the, the gold rush. There's others who are true believers. Mm. I mean, there are very few... I'll make a comment since I'm still very active in the VR world. There are very few people in the VR world. I just came from Digital Hollywood. They have no idea what Second Life is. Right. I'm you you the... posted about that when you mm -hmm. gave a talk to them. That was hilarious when you when you were talking to them. They but were like, what, what the hell are you talking about? I'm in Los Angeles. Oh, right. I speak about VR. I'm meeting... Los Angeles right now is VR crazy. Mm -hmm. I mean, the amount of money and the, and the silliness from Hollywood and media companies but they have no idea what SL was. Any of your experiences in SL, never, they have no idea. So they, they and, and let's be honest, there are, there are half a dozen companies creating social VR right now mm. with millions of dollars invested in them from people who also yeah. have no idea no what clue. the experience is. And they're all about. making the same mistakes and all reinventing the wheel. And well, that, you know, I if you it. if you then go on on, on <laughs> social media and you tell these people directly that what they've just invented, you've been doing in VR for over a decade, okay. they don't like the it. Guy, they don't like guys, it. Guys, guys, please hold <laughs> that thought. Let me throw. Like, guys, Apple please. People talking to Windows people. Ho ho hold that thought real <laughs> quick because <laughs> I, I want to read some some comments here because Information Chief, uh, aka uh, Meta Linden, I stayed in SL because of deep personal relationships developed in SL and that was before I joined the, Lin the lab. I know hundreds of people who established deeply intimate long-term relationships. I just want to read through some of the comments before I forget. Nexi, and then we continue that discussion. Please hold hold that thought. We're going to go over time a little bit because Loki said this is the best Drax uh, hour ever and I know why he said that because I'm relatively quiet. Um, Right, that's I'm, true. I'm talking less than <laughs> usual, so, so that's good. <laughs> the best moderator is the quiet one. Well, uh, I put a Mickey in his drink. He'll be sleeping soon. <laughs> so, uh, that's I not the Bill O'Reilly model, Q. Sorry. Just keep drinking, darling. <laughs> keep drinking. So Nexi says, stay in SL. Personally, started out because I'm awkward and wanted to make games. I came for the technology that allow my dreams of game dev and stayed for the people and friends I made. Information Chief uh, says, also my own story. Many of my friends is similar to uh, Artful's. Uh, to you, um, Nadine, living our lives and our actual gender in SL has led to confidence and determination to change our real life avatars um, I encourage folks to watch Drax Files 31 by the way which has a very quick ca cameo by Veronica Stidwell and number two a great story Num yeah number two is about that annoying woman from Berlin um, I'm not her again. So, a couple more comments. Uh, American Horror Story, Ranoki says, Hello, fellow SL users, is that Strawberry Sing? So, here's a fan of yours. Uh, Yen says, UBS just jumping with my iPad. Great points around the table. UBS, isn't that that bank that got... Anyway, I don't know what people are talking about. Uh, here in the local chat, we have a couple of comments. The delivery um, in the United States. <laughs> No, UBS. UBS. No, not UPS. UBS oh. with a, with a, a soft B. Oops. Oops. UBS. Uh, what other comments do I we have? Um, Cooperation. Yeah, we don't have any more comments that are of um, of value. Jesus Christ, guys! Why don't you yeah. Why don't you guys post a little bit more uh, cerebral kind of stuff? I know. I know, Strawberry. That's my brand. So rude. I'm offensive. Why are you such a hater? Exactly, Strawberry. I'm a sore loser. Why are you such a hater? Uh, but Strawberry is a sore loser, good. Drax. <laughs> there you go. That's how you fix it. <laughs> but, Strawberry, good. but Strawberry, on a, on a, on mm -hmm. a serious note, because uh, you've been posting also about um, the increase in... Well, uh, mildly put, the, 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 the no decline in public oh, discourse where prims. people were. Pe oh yeah, prim limit. Wait a minute. Prims. Is this why about did, us? Why aren't you talking about prim limit? Prim limit. Um, why aren't you talking about second life tracks? Come on. Mm, so, yeah. Sorry, go on. Okay. I've now got yeah. three thousand prims limit. You know, we're, okay. So we're going over time. Let me ask the audience here: What do you guys want to talk about uh, for the next uh, for the last uh, ten minutes? Because then I gotta run out. And get uh, get into real life. Um, and I feel bad a... now. What were you asking me, Drax? 
I don't know where I was going. I have no idea. <laughs> oh I don't my know. God. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Why do you want to talk about it? That was a general question. What do you got? What do you guys want to talk about? <laughs> Friends. Would what, like I want to, to talk about whatever mm, I'm thinking limit. about every three minutes. Arden wants to talk about what he's thinking about. Or why are they going to kick us all out and make us go to Sansar and pay, pay ah, all the money? Ah, so you're not never. no friend oh of the Oh my lab. god, Sansar. Oh, here we go. They're never Nadine. going to force us. Stop. Let's I'm start with Nadine. Try and us. Quiet. Quiet, Joe. Nadine, what, what about Sansar? Do you have Sansar anxiety? What do you think about it? What do you know about it? Are you excited? Um, Are you? I have zero it, Sansar anxiety. I have no idea what to think of it. Because uh, I mean, if you have to start over and everything, <laughs> then I'm like, hmm. You know what? I'm staying here with my inventory. Mm -hmm. I mean, wants. we we, we spent tons of money in our avatar and land and everything. So I mean, to start right. over. Mm -hmm. Amazing, no. isn't it? What I'm worried about with Sansar is, I mean, uh, I like creating things, and, and there's been a tremendous evolution in the creativity in, in Second Life. It started off with uh, very simple prims, primitive, yeah. and then it uh, evolved into sculptees, and then there's real mesh now. Um, but um, as things mm, advance mesh. in technology, <laughs> uh, you need people want more detail. Uh, it, it's just more and more work every time. Uh, and I'm yeah. just a little bit worried about Sansar that uh, ordinary people will have a really hard time to get uh, to create it stuff. Is, it is already a problem really in Second to. Life. But I that's guess. not the stated goal. The that's stated a big, goal. Uh, um, Le learning a steep but learning curve for making mesh already in here. I know yeah, what you're. I know what you're it? saying, Arden. But let me say two things real quick. And, and again, I mean, this is. I'm not taking any sides. I think the points that that you guys are making are very valid. But it is, and I'm just repeating this. What the lab says. They are saying that they want to create with Sansa a VR creation engine where everybody can be at the table. They want to level the playing field when it comes to creating social VR experiences. So I have. Yeah, not building. I, so they actually shifted. I think their their goal uh, first was uh, to make Sansar Second Life 2.0. But I think they no, well, they have never be. said that. They've never said that. Let me. Th th this is an interesting um, myth I that I. Oh, if they're going to level that, uh, level the years. floor, what are the terms of it? What are the terms of service? Uh, the only reason I came to Second Life is because I convinced them to let intellectual property stay with the creators. Mm -hmm. It wasn't Lawrence Lessig, it was Lawrence Rosenthal. But that's the thing that we <laughs> came out of the SF Web 3D group when Second Life was being used by almost nobody in mm -hmm. 2000s, you know. So, what's the new Sansar going to be? In other words, if I bring my pants to the Sansar, do I own them? Mm -hmm. uh, they changed the terms of service so that I don't own my pants anymore. Yeah. But I did when I came in here. I owned my pants. I hate it when that happens. Uh, That's a big issue. For anyone who's going to high fidelity now, be, be wary of whatever you import in there. That there's no permission system there whatsoever. Not it's, yet, I right. think. Not yet. And it's you a big to issue. The wheel there too. But that's a that's yeah. that the big issue here again is how Silicon Valley is sort of as a whole forcing a model on people that is sort of enriching a few and and is sort of just transferring all sorts of intellectual property. But it writes to to a to a the term to platforms. that Prokofsky came up with. I agree. Techno fascism. That yep. was the term that you know was used coming out of the Second Life experiment, and uh, you know poo pooed by so many, including people in Second Life. But that is, you know, that is a scare. Yeah, I that don't is disagree. Where, you know, you know, I don't where disagree with that. It's a big, it's a big issue. But I do think, I, I hope that that with Sansar, um, it will, there will be very clear communication that uh, that uh, um, they want to empower folks so that they can monetize also their their their. I creation. hope so. You know, just to let you all know that you know, I, I mean, I really haven't been in Second Life for two years. Uh, but five, uh, four doing... years, I was, I was building things in Open Sims mm -hmm. uh, and trying to do business using Open Sims as a platform. Uh, you know, because again, I had the rights to my own work. Uh, you know, but again, there was no bubble at that point. VR wasn't interesting. There was a trough of of disillusionment. The second trough that comes where there's nothing going on. Uh, in terms of the outside corporate media, well, now again, what people are doing it, you know, for their own personal reasons or creative reasons, or you know, or using it to supplement other things. But for people in the business of 
uh, of 3D media and, you know, in technology. Uh, you know, as I say, you opened the discussion today talking about the bubble of VR that's been going on probably about two and a half, three years now in earnest. Mm. Uh, you know, and... Listen, Cube, I, I, I don't disagree with you at all. I just want to say that, uh, first of all, there are people who um, who who make their livelihoods with SL creation. And I, this is a whole different discussion. We can discuss uh, how they came there, uh, What's what are the parallels with real life. Some of them had, you know, a good starting point, um, were ahead right. of others right from the beginning. So it's in that sense, it mirrors real life, that it, real life is very unfair in the sense that you can't say, well, this guy didn't make it because he's lazy. No, they didn't have the same starting position. One one guy, uh, you know, has his has his uh, leg uh, uh, tied to his they were, to his they elbow. They were called in her car for a reason. I mean, you know the. Uh, okay, but the, the original advertising Sherpers, the corporations that yeah, you know, raised millions yeah, of dollars to do projects or to do work, you know, lots of them were excellent employees. Whoops. <laughs> I mean, that's just reality. But yeah, that is the story. Yeah. It's almost like a Trump administration bringing in people that you know. Uh, just like a Trump <laughs> No, but let me say one thing here real quick because Loki says, and first of all, Marianne McCann reminds us that uh, the SL 2.0 myth came actually from Hamlet Wagner James Ao, who uh, regular listeners know. Mm -hmm. I'm not a friend of uh, his, um, to put it mildly. Loki Elliott says Sansa <laughs> will, about, will be about buying, buy, buy, consume, consume, uh, and then uh, not create, but arrange. Uh, but Loki, first of all, if you want to comment, why? How do you know that? And isn't Second Life also showing us that, given the opportunity, if the opportunity to everyone is given that they can create, most people choose not to create but to consume. I mean, is this something? There, 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 yeah. there are no building tools in Sansa yet proper building tools where you can really make stuff like we have here in Second Life. And, you know, Ebba said that they'll have those eventually. But have at, to the moment, to those. Yeah, at the moment, Sansa is just arranging stuff that you buy from other people. You from guys are judging make, this from um, from the two, three presentations that he made. No, no, and wait a minute. I haven't even seen it. Yeah. I have little but birds sitting on my shoulder telling me everything. Listen, that's a shame. Uh, then they won't. They, they they can't expect the growth pattern they had with SL, and if that's true, I mean, I think uh, it's a way. Okay, let me let me because I'm the moderator. I want to end the discussion about San, uh, that aspect of Sansar because we are speculating based on two three public appearances, and I think what we should do is I to know. listen very closely what they're saying uh, <laughs> in a more in depth uh, form in very long interviews um, where Ebbe has stated in. in the last two years in many many interviews that they want to be the wordpress of vr where people can yes they can use templates but they can also go deep inside and create their own experiences if they have those skills now i want to say one more thing and then i'll shut up and then we have a closing round um Arden was saying earlier that it's a huge learning curve with Mesh. You're correct. But that learning curve, arguably, with VR, and that's why I'm enthusiastic about VR input devices, like controllers, um, there's a bunch of examples where creation is is going a route of very intuitive creating by basically painting in mid-air. There are several applications for the yeah. Vive. Um, there is Tavori, which you just you just grab stuff and you paint on the ground and you create an entire world just by basically sculpting. Uh, there is Oculus Medium. There is, there is Tilt Brush. There's more and more things are coming online. Um, Codon is an application where you can create um, figurines, you can animate things. There is a thing called AnyLand uh, that's kind of like a second life for VR in a way where you can also create just by using the controllers. So I think that the future but it's still we still the, the right? level of quality is very comparable to the prims you were able to make here in Second Life in 2003. It's totally not the, at the level of what people can create in Mesh, for instance, and and sell at the arcade or whatever, um, you know, gacha event or, or clothing event or so. There's just such a big world of difference. And I've seen Abba do live uh, demonstrations in Sansar of arranging furniture <laughs> and grabbing things with uh, with his uh, controllers. The and IKEA simulator. 
<laughs> EK is oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> not up to level of what we have in Second Life right now, even. So. Arduin, I would. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what 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 uh, they need the the golden ticket for Sansa to become a huge success is two things. One, a fantastic avatar editor because that's one of the things in Second Life that no one else has. The extreme, uh, you know, freedom of making your avatar exactly the way you want it to look, your own and boobs. a way to build in world <laughs> oh, proper good-looking. I believe that was. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. So, okay. So let's just oh, say have, uh, we have little information about have Sansar, work. and uh, we'll we'll see what happens. And Marianne just says uh, Marianne perks up to to the mention of the arcade. And let me just say the the next Drex Files video, which will it's come cool. before Christmas. Now, this is the this is the year end show uh, podcast. We're gonna do reruns. So this is the last podcast for the year. But there will be one more um, Drex Files video that that are of course much more labor intensive than just inviting a bunch of drunken friends. Uh, on a stage. Um, hey, I'm not drunk, huh? Sorry, ex <laughs> except for the. the, the, the <laughs> <laughs> you're not My bottle is still closed. Nadine, I'm really oh shocked. Uh, your you lack of commitment. Ready? Your lack of commitment, Nadine, is shocking. <laughs> <laughs> I don't the want to mention oh that God. since you mentioned the arcade, I, I, I think I, right now the arcade is proof, living proof that Second Life is doing great. Second Life, it's, it's not the end of Second Life for it's, shoppers. This is the golden era for shoppers and cool. the arcade and people who go into the, the arcade it and has people. Two since now, and it's how many days is it open? When, when did it open? Yeah, second days. Day? Um, about second days. Still full. <sighs> What's the arcade? See, Cube, let's go to the <laughs> arcade. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. But that's what, like, I, but that's what uh, I don't get. Let's People keep saying, oh, Second Life is dying, but look at everything that's happening. It's that we're getting bento, we're getting more prims, we have all these events and different things going on. There's hunts no. and shopping events. Yeah. Yes. And I've got it's this Joe is doing, Joe is doing cr incredible work on different sims and all that kind exactly. of stuff. Second Life yes. is so far can time yeah. travel here. Oh. Within two exactly. months, this, this sim was paying its own tier. What is with that Joe <laughs> admiration? Society crap. All right. Uh, well, you know you're an honorary member, Donnie. Next thing you know, uh, Joe will install some gotcha vendors. Yeah, you know. I need some. Yeah, I need some glue vine. Dying. Yeah, I so think I'll have that's to look into that. Folks, nothing is dying, uh, and that's beautiful. And we're here, but uh, but there's also an outside we're world, and, and, and things are happening. <laughs> and Lister and dies with an accountant's pen. <laughs> SL it has what? been dead in the media for a long time. So what? What well, did you know, I want to say? That is the good thing about the capitalism. Capital. As long as Second Life is making Linden Lab money, we sh we don't have to be really worried. They're not going to kill us true. until they lose start losing money. Uh, or as long as the journalists say. Uh, Second Life is that? Oh, there? Loki is Loki is reminding me to go to violin practice. Thank you, Loki. He's he's my personal <laughs> manager. Oh my God, oh, Loki! Yeah. How do you know this? Are That's you closest. reading my mind? I actually gotta go and uh, and and supervise well, violin practice. Sharing. Yeah, Always. I'm a, an I'm a exhib exhibitionist. Uh, thank God that I'm not sharing Ooh. the photo of me sitting in my underpants. <laughs> uh, <Too much> information. <laughs> Uh, what I want <laughs> Marianne says I'm a community person to me Sansa lacks uh, people coming in from all over the world doing their own thing making something greater Marianne I'm a community person as well this is why why SL is so important but Sansa is in a closed alpha testing stage right now we have no idea where it's going and uh, I think a lot of people then kind of compare it to High Fidelity which is already open and on Steam Early Access it's a lot of chaos it's already been trolled uh, Britbong trolled <laughs> uh, trolled the welcome area already I think uh, I try, uh, Philip I hasn't learned that anything on High Fidelity oh, yeah? and my laptop did not my laptop didn't allow me to run it I uh, installed right. it and bam crash I was like okay goodbye <laughs> Is it still too hard? It's too hard of a technology jump to get into for most people. Still, mm -hmm. it's, 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 from same what problem, seen, isn't that a so deja vu? Sansa looks better than pretty much oh, all other VR experiences that I've seen so far, mm -hmm. especially yeah, social ones. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I, yeah, I, know, I mean, for us, for us in Second Life, it's not that impressive because we can look at the footage and think, well, we can sort of do that in Second Life. 
But um, compare it to everything else that's outside there at the moment. I mean, they've all got fun gadgets. I mean, High Fidelity's got things that Sansa hasn't. But when you look at the graphics, Sansa uh, is looking pretty sweet. Uh, yeah, and let's Loki. hope there are some that seems to that's get overload. <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> now, Dean, are you sure? Are you sure you're not drunk yet? Not in the right direction. Is it there's, no, it's in the if, if, if you're in Second Life, you always need a new computer anyway. So, okay, I'm gonna end this show. We gotta end when it's when it's the most fun. That's uh, that's what my mother used to say. Actually, let's she, do it again. Actually, she just knocked on my door and said, "What are you yeah. doing so loud in your basement? Stop it right now!" Was machen Sie denn im Keller? Was ist im Keller los? Bitte ruhe jetzt. Ja, die Nachbarn sind schon aufgewacht. Es ist zu spät. Glühwein. Yeah, get out of the basement and into the penthouse. Ich muss meine Ruhe haben. Ich muss jetzt meine Ruhe haben. Es ist spät in Deutschland. Ich habe es von Kopf bis Fuß auf Liebe eingestellt. Ich oh. bin von Kopf bis Fuß auf Liebe eingestellt. Oh, ja, oh, yeah, Gott bless him. Das He ist meine Welt. Last words, anything from the audience? Strawberry, what are you, are you going to continue uh, tweeting your, your propaganda? My venom? Yes, yeah. of course. I have, <laughs> <laughs> I have an agenda. I have an agenda. I have to keep at well, it. Well, Strawberry, I will keep following your agenda. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the love is in the room. Well, Merry Christmas. <laughs> Actually, wait a minute. There's a war on Christmas, so happy holidays. Happy holidays. <laughs> Sorry. And thank happy you. Hey, baby fun. Jesus. <laughs> Merry Christmas, all of happy you. Happy holidays. There you go. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. I don't know when I'm going to talk to you guys next. And you know what? Happy Res Day, Avatar Drax Files. Please put uh, put on his profile. Oh. Isn't that interesting? It's uh, it's his Res Day, or maybe, Is I don't know. today? Yeah, I think so. The no. No? The 20th of Is your Res Day today? No, not mine, but the, the Drax Files avatar. This is the, the, oh, he, okay. He's very lonely. Oh, okay. uh, he's he's never <laughs> in the world. Aww. Poor guy. Happy birthday, he's got baby no friends. Drax Files. He was born December 2nd, 2013. He's not even online right now. I mean, in world, sorry. What a coincidence. Yeah, it's, it's my weird. mom's birthday today, too. Oh, happy birthday, happy birthday Mrs. Singh. I'm going to have cake tonight. <laughs> Oh. You lucky so I finished the other half of my <laughs> bottle of vodka too then. Okay, thanks everybody for coming. Thanks uh, audience and thanks Thank YouTube you. audience. Uh, do we have any... Let's do this more often, Drax. Uh, yeah. Oh, this is fun. Is fun. What do you mean like... Ah, I know, you guys you think... Know, having a Drax file, recording it live. You Can guys... I come back and share more of my propaganda? Cube is no. undressing. Now we gotta really end it. Look, oh my Cube. God. <laughs> oh my god, it's, it's, it's happening. Uh, this, is a, this is a G rated sim. I will ban the art. Thank you, Cube, for ending it uh, the way it all started with, uh, with middle aged men dressing in Santa underwear. <laughs> This is well, this is second life, life in a nutshell. <laughs> it wouldn't be. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't be second life without uh, people dressed in Santa Claus. All right, I'm gonna. So you end for happy Sox. holidays. It's happy. the only it's the only outfit I had in my inventory that was Santa related. It's awesome. Cube, are you uh -huh. taken? Sure. What? <laughs> it's cute. Oh. taken. Cube is cube. Oh, this is getting you romantic. gotta look at his profile. Uh, you know, you said okay, uh, you see, oh, yeah, look, look at his profile. See. I think he's staying in a room and Pardon. not in my sim. Good. <laughs> okay, good. Good Let's night, guys. A good, good day, and have a great weekend, guys. I'm gonna end the broadcast. That was an abrupt ending. Anyway, thank, thanks for listening. Thanks for a great year of shows. Um, and uh, yeah, we really enjoyed that live broadcast. We try to mix it up. Are we not? Happy holidays, everyone. Have a fabulous uh, transition into the new year. I'm recording this uh, outro uh, while I'm quite tired. Uh, again, there is another video coming before, just before Christmas, uh, that I hope you enjoy. And it has the arcade in it, so <laughs> even for Cube, uh, so he, he gets educated on the arcade. That's it. Support the show. Throw us some linen dollars. Um, throw us some news scoops. 
um, if you're in Sansa, report on what's happening in there and then, uh, you know, anonymously, obviously, and then we can sort of like leak it out. Uh, be active in the world, in the, in the physical world. Stand up against hate, um, stand up against bigotry, push back. Don't say, yeah, can't we all get along? No. Um, we can't get along with, with hateful people. We can't. Um, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Alrighty, have a fab weekend and goodbye. The Drax Files Radio Hour with Joe Yardley is a weekly production of Basic Drax Entertainment. The show is supported by Time Portal, SL Artist, Warbug, Zero One Heavy Industries Corporation, Hextra Ordinary Fine Magical Goods, Ionic, Maven Homes, Giza Creations, Strawberry Sing, Abranimations, Eros Avatars, The Cube Republic, What Next, Landscapes Unlimited, Bay Cities You Know for Kids, Fallen Gods Incorporated, Feroche SL, and Death Row Designs. Contact the show via Skype, Drax Files, Avatar, Drax Files, or email radio at draxfiles.com. Thank you.